Hey, what's up YouTube? Well, I think I got a pretty interesting and helpful video for you today. Working on a Daikin mini split. And the failure ended up being the EEV coil. Tested it out with ohms and it tested bad. So, problem is my supply house said the thing was on back order for a month. Well, we're in summertime now. It's regularly hitting 95 degrees. And this is the main AC for the for the home. And this thing just couldn't be down for a month. So what are you going to do? Well, I don't know if you know, but mini splits were not always controlled by an EEV. They were, a lot of them just a few years ago were controlled by capillary tube. So when I diagnosed the bad coil, I figured out what to do about it. Now I'm sure that everybody knows that you can pay over $300 and get a tool that looks similar to like this, but it doesn't have the wires or anything. This is off and this is actually a magnet and you put it on there and you can adjust it by hand. Okay, well, you know, I'm not going to spend $300 on a magnet. All you need is a strong neodymium magnet. This is just a Braun light from Harbor Freight. And I'll show you that it works. So my problem was the coil failed, I believe, right as the unit started up. Because the expansion valve was all the way closed and the line was frozen and the pressure was way down around 50. So I think the unit started up, the computer went to close the coil because it closes it, it opens it back up. And when it closed, that's, I guess, right when the failure happened. Um, so here we go. You can see my pressures. Now this is what I did. I manually set the EEV right here. Okay. Good pressure to be at, roughly 125. And it stays right there, no matter how fast or slow the compressor is going. Um, so check it out. Well, you just heard, hear it is speeding up. So the, the load is increasing. Now the pressure did went down a couple pounds. It was at about 127. That's not a big deal. But check this out, you ready? Let's take it. And give it a second. See, so I closed it up. We can close it up more if we want. This is all you got to do, just little swipes, just like this, to close it. See, we're dropping. And that's about where I was at. When I Now it's closed as much as it's going to go. That's where I was at when I came out here, and this line is, see, look, we're freezing up already. Alright, so let's go ahead and open her back up. Now you just do a couple of movements and you allow it to change. Allow the pressure in the system to adjust to your movements. Alright, we'll do it a couple more times. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to comment and say, oh, well, if you buy the $300 magnet, you won't have to spin it or swipe it as many times. I'm sure it probably works better. But you know what? I, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'll save my $300, and I'll just use something that I already have. trying to fine-tune it back to 125 because that's where it's been at I was able to order the, the part online and it got here in about a week 
So in order to keep my customer with AC while I'm waiting for the new coil, uh, this is what I did. I just set it where it needs to go. Little adjustments till we get where we're going. And that's looking pretty good to me. So there you go. Just wanted to share that with y'all. Save you $300 on a stupid magnet. Um, yeah. And also, just in case anybody's wondering, the part number's a little hard to find. Now this is for a Daikin 6 wire. There's Daikin 5 wires. Mine has a 6 wires. Okay. And... Let's see. Get you the part number here. Okay. It's the part number. So uh, there you go. And uh, it was strange. I mean, the, the coil has failed. Not completely, but the numbers are not right. The new coil tested at 50 ohms per side all four times. The old coil was testing... 48 48 on one side and the other side was 40 and then 24 so clearly it's not good but it for whatever reason was not enough to set a trouble code and shut the unit down and just act like it was low on refrigerant which it wasn't but anyways hope that's helpful y'all have a good one